pastor or minister. That scripture there, children, grown and little ones, because I know some of you still parents, y'all still, your parents are still living, right? Miles are gone. But even though they're gone, you still honor them. It doesn't say honor them because they're of their religious belief. It says honor them just because they birthed you. Amen. It doesn't say dishonor him because he's an alcoholic. It doesn't say dishonor him because he's a drug addict. It doesn't say dishonor him because he's gay or she's gay. It doesn't say dishonor him. It says honor him despite their condition. Amen. See, that's the hard part. What else the Ten Commandments? Well, you show me anywhere in that Ten Commandments where it says, uh, honor thy father and thy mother based on their religion. Does it say that? No. It says just honor your mother and father. Then what's going to happen to you? You that you may, that your days may be long upon the earth. So when you do that, God's going to give you a long life. But let's go to Deuteronomy and find out what happens in the law. And I brought this out last week too. What happened in the law if you don't honor them? Deuteronomy 21, starting at verse 18. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father nor the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him or disciplined him, will not listen unto them. Word hearken means listening with an intent to heart. Will not listen unto them. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of the city and unto the gate of that place. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, This is our son, is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton, he eats too much. And a drunkard, and he drinks too much. And all the men of this city shall stone him with stones, that he die. <laughs> so shalt thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. So back then under the law, the parents had the right to take you being stubborn, gluttonous, and a drunkard. Put you in front of all the men of the town, and they would kill you. That's where that term comes. I said this before. That's where that term comes. Up. Boy, I brought you in this world. I'll take you out. Amen. I'll make another one look just like you. Keep moving on. Amen. 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 Thank God for grace, huh? How many of you deserve to be stoned? I know I do. I was stubborn, proud, and disrespectful to my mother. Didn't give a rat's behind about my father. Didn't even know him until his death, really. And I started finding out truth about him. Hated him with a passion. But God wouldn't let me move on until I honored him. Well, how can you honor your father if he's in the grave? Hmm. That was my question, too. The way I had to honor him was forgive him for the way he treated me. Amen. Amen. How many of you need to forgive your kids? Forgive your parents? Amen. Because you're not going to be able to move forward. Because the only thing that's hurting, it's not hurting them that you're walking in unforgiveness. It's hurting them. Because they're going to know about their lives. They gave you their wisdom. Amen. 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 Matter of fact, let's look at a guy who made his father pay. I preached this here before too, but I think he's the perfect example in the Bible of a, of a son who made his father pay. Amen? How long have y'all been paying for your kids? Nowadays, they make sure you pay by locking your tail up, don't they? Or they're going to garnish your money out your check. It ain't no question about whether you show up. They're going to make sure you show up. You know, because that woman going to be running right there. Daddy, man, my mommy, baby, daddy won't pay. They be right at the court. You're going to pay. But let's look at this guy who made his father pay. All right? Let's go to Luke 15. Luke chapter 15. And this is a familiar story. Prodigal son. Or daughter. I like to have a daughter here, too. Prodigal son or daughter. Who are you? Going to Luke. Luke. Luke chapter 15. Okay. Y'all pray for me. Because even though I achieved certain things, I like it, don't get me wrong, because one of the greatest things that happened last week to me, it wasn't the fact that I got ordained a minister, it was the fact that I finally got the Father's <laughs> blessing. The Father's blessing is so important in your life. You either need to give your children the Father's blessing and hope that your Father will bless you. So I can care less to be honest, I'm happy I got it, you know what I mean? I reached the pinnacle after 15 years, I've been up and down trying to get that thing, but if God already knew the appointed time. And the thing about it, I know a lot of people who are working together, but they're not, you know, I'm, in other words, they're working just to get the title, but they haven't been doing nothing to help nobody. See, so they don't do no help until they get the title and find themselves validated. But when you finally know you've been doing the work for over 15 years, and like myself, you know, when it finally come there, it ain't no big deal because you have already been doing the work. Amen. It's nothing more than validation. Amen. So I got the validation of the bishop over something that I've been doing for over the last 10, you know, 15 Amen. years. 
So I'm not, I'm excited, but I was more excited that he validated me. Because the scripture says, the laying on of hands by the presbytery. And that's what I received, the laying on of hands by the presbytery. Somebody phone ring, can they please turn it on? Amen. Um, so, that's the most important part. Because once the Father gives you the blessing, he can't never take it back. Amen? Once you receive the validation of the Father, it's a wonderful thing. I even did that with my daughter when she graduated college. I'm standing there, all these people were in the room, and at that time I was almost homeless myself. But I'm at the college graduation party. And all these men are talking about what they did for my daughter. And I'm like, and what they gave her. And I'm like, wait a minute, I gave her like how in the world. So they gave me an opportunity to say some words. So the first thing I said, Lord, what can I give her? You know, what can I give her? He said, give her something that no other man can give her. And what was that? The blessing of the Father. So in front of all those people, I called up to come up to the bridge. And I laid my hands on her and gave her the blessing of the Father. No, I don't care if you gave her a car, a diamond ring. I don't care what you gave her. You could have gave her a million dollars. But can nothing outdo you blessing your children? Amen. Amen. So if you got kids, men and ladies, that you need to bestow upon them the blessing of the parent. Because that's the greatest thing you can ever give them. It ain't no amount of money that can be worth it. Amen? I hope y'all hear me. Grab your child and say, you know what, I just, you are not going to go through what I would do. Matter of fact, you're going to be blessed beyond blessed. You're going to be wonderful. Speak some future into them other than prison, other than drug selling, other, other than alcoholism, other than getting over, okay? You speak blessings into their life. Amen? But let's look at this man, or this son, uh, who made his father pay. So we in Luke, let's look at verse 7 first. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. I like that verse because Jesus is saying, I want one of you who is messed up more than those who think they ain't got no problem. Amen? So those who are the thou people, Jesus said, I want you more than I want them. Amen. Because that's what he came for. Look at verse 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of all the angels of God over one sinner that what? Repents. Can you imagine when you decide to change your life, all the angels in heaven are rejoicing over that? What a party that goes on over you. Amen. Because they're just waiting on you to get it right. Then he goes into this parable, verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Now, I need to pause right there because you need to understand the background of that. When that young man went up to his father and said, Father, give me my inheritance, because that's what he meant. Give me mine. Went up to his daddy. In Jewish tradition, when you went up to your father and said, give me my money, you were telling him, I consider you dead. Because you didn't ask for no inheritance until your parents were gone. So for him to walk up to his father who's still alive and say, give me what belongs to me, he's telling you, daddy, you dead in my eyes. That's Jewish tradition. Amen. Let's read verse 13. And now many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with what? Riotous. <coughs> spend it all. Spend it all. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. And when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in need. He began to get hungry. Amen. He began to need again. But it's too proud for the call home. Uh oh, God started to mess with me a little bit. Well, he's too proud for the call home. You know, I'd rather go to friendship. I'd rather go to Salvation Army, but I ain't calling home. Amen. Amen. Verse 15. And when he had joined himself to a certain citizen of the country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. So now he want to join up with somebody who ain't got no good for him, who had no purpose for him but to use him. Because, see, you need to understand, for him to feed swine being a Jewish boy was the lowest thing a Jew could do. That was disgraceful for a Jew to feed swine. Amen. Amen. Verse 16. And he would fain and have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Now, not only is he feeding the swine, but now he's ready to eat what the swine eat. He got so hungry. Have y'all been there? No, he's not. 
I remember I, used, I was just telling somebody before, when I was in that condition, I had nothing but flour and water. Amen. Flour and water, maybe a little pepper. And you talk about being constipated, but I was hungry. And I mixed that flour and water and fried it. Well, nobody else did that. Or have you fried other things? Come on. Come on. Yeah. Amen. All right, verse 17. And when he came to himself, because when you get that low, you are going to come to yourself. So I'm going to wait. See, I like the preacher said in my word nation, he said, don't ever say you at a bottom again. Don't ever claim you at your bottom ever again. Who want to be on the bottom? Because see, when you want to be on the bottom, you're saying something negative. If you're born again and you believe in Jesus Christ, you only go to the foot. Ooh, that thing was proud. You only go to the foot. But if you ever say you're at the bottom, you finish. Because you can only hit the foot of the mountain. But that don't mean you can't climb back up. Amen. But if you hit the bottom, you can't go nowhere else. Amen. And that's what they proclaimed over me. Warren, you kept hitting the foot of the mountain. And you'll climb halfway up, then you'll fall back down. But then you'll get back up and come up back up. But they told me this day, you have made it to the top of the mountain. Because I didn't give up. All right now. I didn't give up. And I refuse to give up. Amen. Amen. Too much of a fighter and a warrior to give up. Amen. But let's keep reading. Verse 17. And when he came to himself, how many hired servants have my fathers had bread enough and to spare, and I perish with this hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Now he's ready to repent. See, he's practicing already what he needs to do in the presence of his father. Because he done hit the foot. Not the bottom. Because see, if he was at the bottom, he wouldn't even be repentant. So he hit the foot. Oh, I love that revelation. He finally came to the foot and said, I need to go back home and repent. Now how am I going to do this? I need to go back home. My father got a lot of servants, got bread, and they eat well. I need to go home and say, Father, what did he say Look at verse 18. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and am no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of thy high servants. Now he's ready to just come in and humble himself. See, you can't go nowhere until you're ready to humble yourself. You wonder why you can't get out your condition? Because you refuse to humble yourself. So guess what you're going to do? Stay where you are. Believe me, I know it. Because you think you deserve something. When God is saying, well, sh show me why I should give you what you're asking for when you're not humble enough to receive it. Because all you want to do is misuse anything I give to you. Amen. But when you come to yourself and willing to do whatever it takes, I bless you. Amen. Amen. Without sin, whatever it takes don't mean rob, steal, and steal somebody else's stuff. Whatever it takes means humble enough to be obedient no matter how painful it is. Well, I've never had to do this before. Well, that's why it's time to do it now. Amen. 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 Verse 19, I'm no more worthy to be called thy son, and make me as one of thy hired servants. Verse 20, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran. I loved him. Amen. And ran. Amen. And fell on the neck and kissed him. Now, if you are parents here, your kids are acting <coughs> ridiculous in the left, and they call you, can I come home, daddy? Can I come home, mommy? You are just, see, this man in the door, this, remember, this is a power. So this is God standing in the door concerning you. Amen. So he's been standing in the door looking for you all along. Amen. And when he finally sees you, he runs to you. He don't wait for you to come to him because he already knew your attitude of repentance. Remember what the man said, I'm going to go home and tell my father, I have sinned against you in heaven. So God already knew you were coming with the right heart. So he ran. Not only did he ran, but the scripture tells us in many places, greet each other with a holy kiss. Some of us are too homophobic as men to even greet each other that way. When I went home in Philadelphia, I had so many men kissing me. Because we understood the glory and the love of God as brothers and sisters in the Lord. But you try to walk into the other man talking about, let me greet you with a holy kiss. Come on. Because you're too fleshy. You don't understand. It ain't got nothing to do with sexual orientation. It has something to do with the spirit of God and loving you. Amen. 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 Italian men do it all the time, and they in the mob. Mm -hmm. They kiss each other right on square in the lip. Some of it called a kiss of death. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But he had compassion and ran. what he already preached. Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his 
sir, bring forth the best robe. Underline that word robe. And put on him, and, oh my God, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. I got to stop there. If you pay attention to this, I know I told it here before, but every time I read this, I get tears and get choked up. Because here's the man that his son looked at and said, I consider you dead. Give me my money. Mm. I consider you dead, daddy. Give me my money. And now the father sees him at the door and runs to him and has compassion and even kiss him. Because how many of you love your kids despite how they feel about you? Amen. And if you saw them, you would be, thank you, baby. Because that's flesh, flesh in your flesh, blood in your blood. I don't care what they do to you, you still want to love them. You birthed them. Right? But look what he does. Underline what? What's the first thing to do? Put a robe on. Then he put a ring on it. And he put a shoe. What does a ring, what does a robe represent? The moment he told the servant to put a robe around him, he said, I'm putting you back in position as my son. Woo! Man, God, my goodness. I'm putting you back in position as my son because you came home with the right attitude. Amen. Amen. You came home with a repentant heart. Amen. Amen. Then, when he gave him the ring, guess what the ring represents in judicial? He said, now I'm going to put a ring on your finger. Now I'm giving you back your authority into this family. Amen. So, he put a robe back in position and a ring giving him back his authority. Now watch the shoe. When he put his shoe back on, because see, in, 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 in biblical day, they wore sandals. Or they had to walk barefoot. That's why they had servants at the door with a bucket of water to clean the mm -hmm. dust off your feet because you've been on the roof. But those who didn't have those sandals, they had to step on thorns and stones, man. And you know, black folk, we got corns. Mm -hmm. I, I can't, you know, I got calluses and all kinds of things. I can't walk barefooted. Come on now. But when he put the shoes back on his feet, he said, you're no more in bondage. So now he did the Father bless him and put him back in position and gave him back his authority. He also said, you're no longer in bondage. Oh, man, y'all need to feel this thing Amen. and honor your father. But see, he came back to honor his father. Are you going to go home and honor your father and mother? How many of you need to go home and honor your father and mother? Even if it's just by a phone call. Even if they're dead, you need to honor them with what? Let them know in the spirit you forgave them for whatever they did to you. I don't care how abusive they've been. I don't care what they've done. You need to tell God, Father, I forgive them so I can move home. Amen. 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 Let's look at, uh, my goodness, that thing hit me. Where did we leave off? Verse 23. No, go back up to 22. But the father said to his servant, bring forth the best robe and put on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. Now he got a big dinner going. Yeah. Big old party. For this my son was dead, verse 23, <laughs> and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Oh, Amen. my goodness. Amen. And then you get to what? Be here. Big old party because your attitude got right. Amen. Because your attitude got right. Amen. Amen. Now, I think I'm going to talk about this guy. I never talked about him, but we're going to talk about him tonight. This is off the page. But the spirit is moving in me anyway. Verse 25. Let's talk about the people who don't like the, the, the fact that you came home with a right attitude. Amen. Amen. Verse 25. Now his elder son was in the field working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. He heard everybody having a good old time over you coming to yourself, coming home. This man considered you dead and you throwing a party? Huh. Jealousy sounds like it's going to get kicked up in a minute, huh? <laughs> Verse 26. And he called one of the servants. He didn't go around and ask his daddy. He called one of the servants over and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, thy brother is come. Now, why did he rejoice? When I went home from my ordination, I thought I would get a lot of rejoicing. I didn't get it. Oh, no. I was still supposed to be the crackhead who couldn't make it. See, you need to understand there are some people who ain't going to like the fact that you finally Amen. become successful. Amen. And that's when you know you're right in God. See, Amen. if you're not being attacked, then you can even question whether you're right in God. I thank God for my enemies who didn't like it. Yes. Did 